Good morning from Twain Heart, California. Uh, don't know if you know that I usually film these devotional videos a couple of days ahead of time, not on Mondays. Um, today I'm in Twain Heart. Uh, today is the day of the big jubilee, which is like the 42nd annual jubilee. It's a fundraiser for the school where I grew up, the Christian school where I went kindergarten through 12th grade. My parents run it. They're in their 70s and um, we brought up our two boys and, and Christy came up. We all, all four of us went up together and spent a few days up here helping them this week. They set up um, <clears throat> uh, several U-Haul trucks worth of uh, antiques and, and furniture and all kinds of the stuff. There's rum, rummage sale, a book sale, a, a pie shop. There's food. There's all kinds of stuff. It's a huge, huge event they they put on at the fairgrounds in Sonora, and um, they are uh, very help, uh, very grateful for our help this year. <laughs> As uh, you know, they're not getting any younger, and it's a lot of it's a lot of hard work. So we are we're up here to help them and, and serve. And so today I come to you from the deck of our little cabin here in Twainheart, um, where uh, there's some pine trees behind me. And <clears throat> uh, if you hear any cars go by or whatnot, we are in the nature. So uh, uh, it, it's a little chilly also. So let's get to this thing. Let's get to this thing. I'm in Deuteronomy 11. I also think this may be my last uh, video devotional because I think in May all of our normal programs are back at church so starting May 1st we won't have any more of these uh, cool daily devotionals but thank you for all of you that are watching and have, have come along through the book of Exodus and Numbers and uh, uh, now Deuteronomy so you guys are awesome okay <coughs> so we're in Deuteronomy 11 Deuteronomy 11, and here we go. Verse 1, love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, his decrees, his laws, and his commands always. Remember today that your children were not the ones who saw and experienced the discipline of the Lord your God, his majesty, his mighty hand, his outstretched arm, the signs he performed and the things he did in the heart of Egypt, both to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his whole country. What he did to the Egyptian army, to its horses and chariots, how he overwhelmed them with the waters of the Red Sea. Okay, so he's basically Moses is saying, let's, let's remember now that your children, because now these people he's talking to are middle-aged because they've lived in the, in the desert for 40 years. They're about to go into the promised land. And he's, he's saying, remember your kids that are now like 10 or 12, 15 years old, 20 years old, they weren't there when God did all these miracles. So he's about to say, you got to tell them about it. Okay, you got to remind them of the, the amazing things that God did. <clears throat> I'm going to skip to verse 8. Observe, therefore, <clears throat> observe, therefore, all the commands I'm giving you today, so that you may have the strength to go in and take over the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, and so that you may live long in the land that the Lord swore to your forefathers to give to them and their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, side note, as I think about a land flowing with milk and honey, I think about all the things that I love, and, and their ingredients are usually some sort of milk or honey. Think about ice cream. Ice cream is made of milk and sugar, right? That's milk and honey. Basically, this is a land flowing with ice cream. And Daniel says yes to that. Okay. Uh, and then you have other things like <coughs> pie, like sour cream pie or cheesecake. What do you think is in cheesecake? Milk and honey. Um, you name it, it probably got milk and honey in it. <laughs> Mm, even cookies uh, generally have some kind of butter, right, and sugar, milk, and honey. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, verse 10. The land that you are entering to take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you planted your seed and irrigated it by foot as a vegetable garden. But the land you are crossing the Jordan to, possess, to take possession of is a land of mountains and valleys that drinks rain from heaven. It is a land that the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are continually on it from the beginning to the year of the year to its end. Verse 13. So if you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today to love the Lord your God, 
with all your heart, excuse me, to love, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will send rain on your land in its season, both autumn and in spring rains, so that you may gather in your grain new wine and oil. <clears throat> I will provide grass in the fields for your cattle and you will eat and be satisfied. Be careful. So there's some promises here that, that Moses is talking about. If you faithfully obey and serve the Lord your God and love him, then God will bring rain on your land and, and <clears throat> bless your crops and your hills and valleys and whatnot, you know. <clears throat> okay. Oh, so that you may gather in your grain, new wine, and oil. Basically, you know, so you can have the supplies that you need. You can have food to eat. God will bless your land. Okay, uh, here's here's the so those are the promises. Here's the warning, verse sixteen. Be careful, or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. Be careful, he says. Then the Lord's anger will burn against you, and he will shut the heavens so that it will not rain, and the ground will yield no produce, and you will soon perish from the good land the Lord is giving you. Verse eighteen. <clears throat> this is a very um, well known verse in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy eleven eighteen, fix these words of mine in your hearts, okay, in your hearts and in your minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands, and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land that the Lord swore to give your forefathers, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. So he's saying, fix, put these words in your hearts, okay? Put bind, uh, uh, what do you say, hearts and minds, tie them as symbols on your hands, okay? Uh, and on your foreheads, teach them to your children, talking about them when you're at home and when you walk along the road and, and when you lie down and when you get up, basically all the time, right? Um, <clears throat> now, uh, Jewish people take this very literally, and so um, there are there are parts of their uh, like robes that they would wear where they have tassels, you know, tied to their, their hands, and they have things that are uh draped on their um you know along their uh, chest area and and even <clears throat> things that they wear on their headdress that are literally um these kinds of uh scriptures right i can't think of the proper there's a there's a proper term for these that this is escaping me right now but <clears throat> the point is to have these these words always in front of you Right to have these to have the words of the law, you know. The, Moses says, "Fix these words of mine." Now it could be these verses. Maybe he's referring to the law in general. Maybe he's referring to God's promises. Um, maybe he's literally referring referring to these last five verses. But to fix these words in your heart and mind, right, which means to be able to remember them. Now to re to be able to remember some things, you got to put them in front of you. Um, my kids are always talking about, oh, man, I'm going to forget that. <clears throat> and, you know, I, can't, I have to do it right now or I'm going to forget to do it. And I'm like, no, you're not. Write it down. You know, you, you don't, you know, write it down on a piece of paper to remind you. Oh, I don't know if that'll help me. You know, I don't know if I can remember that. Um, it, once I write it down, what if I lose the piece of paper? Okay, well, they're both old enough that they have phones now. I said, set a reminder on your phone. You know, when do you need to remember that thing? Tomorrow morning when you wake up? Okay, put a reminder on your phone so that at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. or whenever it is that you wake up, I you know, 6 a.m. or for Nathaniel, like 11 a.m., <laughs> um, you know, put a reminder on your phone so that, bloop, it comes up right before you. Why? Because then you will remember when you get the reminder from your phone uh, or your calendar alert or whatever it is, however it is to remind you, you will remember... When it, when it bings on your phone, bing, you know, reminder to do this thing. Uh, simple, simple solution. But the reason it works is because it comes 
up before your eyes because you see it again you know tomorrow or the next day or whatever and this is the same idea that moses is saying with the stories of god's faithfulness his provision the miracles that he's done for all the the israelites here uh for the way he delivered them from egypt and brought them through the red sea and all this stuff. he's saying you, you you mustn't forget what god has done for you and if that means you got to write it down and put it up all over your house and all over your wall, your walls of your, he even says here at verse 20, write on the door frames of your houses so that every time you go in or come out, you are reminded of God's goodness, of his faithfulness. Um, fix them in your heart and in your mind, you know, uh, and, and some of the ways that we remember things are through repetition. Pretty much the only way that we remember things are through repetition. Uh, <clears throat> there's a reason why musicians practice scales over and over and over again. It's not because um, they forget their scales. It's because it, it's, it's all about, at that point, like piano, it's all about muscle memory. Okay, and you're working on doing your scales better today than you were yesterday. But you also have to learn what the scales are. And then when you play them, your, your fingers, without even thinking about it, remember those scales, right? So uh, same would go for any kind of like, anything that you need to practice over and over again. There's a reason why there's a long time be between graduating medical school and practicing medicine, you know, on your own as a doctor. There's internships, there's residencies, there's all of these different steps because it takes time to learn things and then to remember them. And sometimes your muscle memory is what you're trying to train. And this is the same thing that Moses wants us to remember in regards to God's faithfulness and his goodness in regards to God's provision and in, 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 in regards to the miracles and the promises of, of the Lord and of the Old Testament and of the, of the Torah, of the, of the law here and all these stories. Moses is saying, remember them, but don't just remember them a little bit. Remember them always. And don't just remember them uh, when they pop up on your phone alerts. Practice memorizing all of these verses and these stories so that they become a subconscious part of your muscle memory okay because sometimes we fa we are faced with uh, difficult situations and and our if our instinct can be to react in a way that is remembering God's faithfulness and goodness if that's part of our muscle memory of our mind to know that well God is good and faithful not blah, you know uh, um um uh, I'm scared and terrified by this situation, you know, that's a good place for us to be. Um, write them in the door frames of your houses. Okay, and why do we do that? Because verse 21 says, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land that the Lord swore to give your forefathers as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. And these promises of, of Moses here, these promises of God are, are promises that say, um, you know, I want, I want you to be well. That doesn't mean free from, from difficulty, but it means to be well. It means that things may go well with you. There's, a, there's that phrase that often happens, that things may go well with you. That, and God speaks here in this chapter about providing rain for your crops and, and providing the ability for you to eat. And um, so... so uh, yeah, so here's my encouragement to, to you today from Deuteronomy 11. And maybe the last time we'll, we'll see each other in this YouTube devotional. My encouragement for you today is to um, do something, find a way somehow in your life to put before you reminders about God's goodness and his faithfulness. Whether that's even as an uh, alert on your phone, a calendar or a reminder alert, or if there's things that you can do that are similar to, to binding these things to your you know, hearts and minds and your doorposts. Maybe you have a scripture verse on your computer desktop background, or you have daily devotional verses that pop up. And I, I, don't, I don't even know, but I know that there are many ways that we can be reminded of God's goodness and faithfulness. And we have we have tons of technology now that can help us do that. Um, or we can 
write down scriptures and put them on our walls. That's something Christy did this whole last year. She, uh, while we were in quarantine and, and in our house 24 hours a day, <laughs> um, she wrote down scriptures and just put them up all over the house. So much so that by now when, when uh, the, it's like the house is full of scriptures everywhere. <laughs> um, so whatever you got to do to help remind yourself that God is awesome and good and faithful and he is a provider, uh, my encouragement to you today is to do that thing. To think about ways where you can re uh, remind yourself God is good. He has delivered us from things in the past and will continue to deliver us from things in the future. That he's a faith faithful God and that he loves you. Uh, so let's uh, pray as we close today. Um, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your faithfulness and goodness in our lives. Lord, I pray that we would uh, put things before us to um, just help us remember that you are faithful as we go about our days and nights and as we are busy with our work and ministry and whatever else we're doing or all of our activities. Help us not to forget that you are good, that you are faithful, and that you are a provider um, and that you have done so much for us in the past. We love you and we're thankful, we're thankful for your promises. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Have a good week. We'll see you in church.